Wake up, new mid journey feature just dropped and I bet you've been waiting for this for a while. In painting is finally here. As you can see on the announcement page, it's actually not called in painting. They're calling it vary by region, which definitely just means the same thing. There are some tips and tricks written here that we'll go over in this video. And why don't we start with a live example? Why don't we start with this portrait of a man futurism style? Number one is quite captivating. Let's see what we can do with that. Now underneath your upscale, you're going to see the variation options. We have very strong, very very subtle and very region. This is in painting. And I guess the big tip right off the start is make sure you have the remix mode on. And you can do that easily by typing in forward slash remix into the prompt box. Remix mode is turned on. Now when we go to the upscale and hit in painting, very region, we're gonna have a chance to edit our prompt. You can either select a rectangle tool or a lasso tool if you want even better control over the area. Why don't we do that? We'll hit the lasso. Now I wanna say that that lasso tool isn't quite intuitive. It's a little finicky here and there, but I don't think it's a big issue. You'll get used to it. Now I'm gonna try just adding some words to the prompt like laughing. Portrait of a laughing man. Let's see how this does. And while that's generating, if you hit very region again, your selected region will still be chosen. That comes in handy. And this time I'm going to erase the prompt and try something like laughing hysterically. God, these are terrifying. Okay, portrait of a laughing man. Um, it certainly changed his face, but I think we can tell right away that the smile isn't connected to his eyes. So I doubt that the other example laughing hysterically will work at all. <laughs> Oh, look, laughing hysterically actually kind of work. I mean, the melds look a lot better. So what we can do is actually take the lasso tool and select the rest of his face. But oh, let's say you do it and look, you've made a mistake. Check out this undo button up here. Easy as that. Okay, now we'll select the rest of his face. That tool is pretty fun to use. Oh no, when we selected the whole face, these came up and oh, that's actually kind of freaking me out. Okay, in painting isn't perfect. It's basically like a monkey's paw. You don't really know what you're going to get, but it's only been out for a day and maybe I'm missing some things. Please let me know if you have any tips. Laughing hysterically with the whole face turned out okay. I like number three a lot. I changed it to angry man and uh, yeah, as you can see. Okay, you've seen the live demonstration, but now let's go over some different examples of what you can accomplish with this feature. All right, so I started with this beautiful woman. Let's call her Marsha. And I wanted to see what Marsha would look like with purple eyes. I was able to get something like this, which was pretty cool. And these as well. This looked really real, but it wasn't quite what I had hoped for. So I wanted to see what Marsha would look like with purple sunglasses on. And you start to get stuff like these. Like, these are not good. Let's just be blunt about it. In painting isn't perfect. It's not that easy to use. I mean, it's not simple, but there are some things you can try, like writing a slightly longer prompt, a lady wearing purple sunglasses. That seems to help a little. And you know what seemed to help the most? Writing a longer prompt, being really specific as to what you'd like to see. And number three really caught me off guard. I was quite impressed. Like, look at that. It changed her eyes. It's making her look in a different direction. And there's even a reflection inside of the sunglasses. I don't know how accurate that reflection is, but that's pretty powerful. That's a pretty good sign of where things can go one day. And for the record, I use the rectangle tool to select that area of her face. And now here's the next important thing you'll need to know. Inside of your settings, there are two variation options. One is low variation mode and the other is high. These will both affect the results of your in painting. Like take a look at these. This is on low variation, purple sunglasses, and all four images kind of look the same. There is a subtle variation, hence the name. And here are the results on high variation. Can't you see a bigger difference between the four? And I think this is pretty important when you're trying to find one image that really works for you. So I would suggest you have high variation mode on, but that might not be to your preferences. So feel free to do whatever you want. But you know what's absolutely amazing? Changing characters, turning Marsha into a man. I can't believe how good this worked. It's not a remix, it doesn't turn her into a male version, but look, it seamlessly added a male character into her spot. Like, these are amazing. And the next big tip I have for you, what you write inside of that in-painting prompt when remix is on, really matters. Like the stylized and chaos parameters. These will make a big difference 
in your pictures. A higher chaos value and you'll see way more variation inside of your generation. Like <laughs> these four guys, they don't really match, you know? You have four pretty distinct options to go with. And look what happens when you lower the stylized value to S0. Still really high quality pictures, but the look of the guy gets taken much more literal by mid journey. S40 is a good compromise, more strict than normal, but still a little freedom for the bot to navigate. And you know what? Let me show you how I did that. All I did was select the whole region, and then let's try something like Portrait of a King. Look how good these are, man. Oh, that is so funny. That lion is amazing. And you want to know another thing that's actually incredible? First, let's turn Remix off. And then if we go back up to Marsha and hit Very Region, now there is no prompt box available. So it's just going to take whatever your prompt is and change the area that you've selected. Like, take a look at this. We'll hit Submit and we'll get something like these. Different characters. Marsha is no longer here. Look how good that worked. Can you believe it? It's just able to bring in a new character as simple as that. You don't need a new prompt. That's amazing. This works really well for hands, by the way, but we'll get to that in a little bit. And this is absolutely perfect for when you have a background that you love. Like these images, I really enjoy the background. I like where the character is posed. And now just being able to select the character, we can tell Midjourney to run it again. But to keep that background, that's amazing. And I just want to say, if you'd like to support the channel, I have some prompt packs available on my website. The goal of them is to give your creativity a strong foundation. And I think my packs will give you the confidence to explore and create on your own. Check them out, let me know what you think. Okay, a couple quick notes. It doesn't appear that seeds do anything. I guess I can just show you. Let's try seeing a bucket hat, but we'll choose a specific seed. We'll hit enter. And now if we were to do the exact same thing with the exact same seed, my point is that they won't be the same pictures. So therefore the seed doesn't really matter inside of that in painting prompt. Here's the first generation and I think these turn out pretty great. I mean, one is hilarious and two looks really good. But the point is that seeds don't show up in the prompt anymore. So therefore, I don't think they really do anything. And there's your proof for new hats using the same seed number. Seeds don't matter. The other thing to note is that this works on the mobile Discord app, and that's pretty cool. Okay, fine. I guess there's one more thing I want to point out. If you want to use in painting on an old picture, here's all you need to do. Look, here's a cute cat resting on a building, but there's no in painting button. So what we have to do is right click on the picture and click the envelope emoji. If you don't see it there, you need to move up here to the top right and hit add reaction. And if you don't see the envelope emoji here, you'll have to search for it. A few will pop up. Make sure you pick the normal one. Now you will have reacted with that emoji. Mid journey will send you some information on that picture. What we want is to copy the job ID. So you're going to highlight it, hit control C if you're on Windows, command C if you're on a Mac. Then in the prop box, we're going to type forward slash show. Now we can paste the job ID, control V, command V. Mid journey will bring up that image as if it's brand new and you'll see the in painting button. What if we just tried leaving the prompt? Do you think it'll add another cat here? No, it didn't work at all. And that's the perfect example of showing you sometimes this feature just doesn't quite work and I haven't been able to figure out all of those little rules yet of why sometimes it works near perfectly and sometimes you get literally the same exact picture with no changes. Please let me know if you figured it out but let's move on. Let's go back to Marsha so you can see how I turned her into an android. This was pretty fun. It started off with just purple eye color and her eyes aren't exactly purple here but that look inspired me to take it a little farther. So I took this picture and I selected an area of her neck and typed in Android Robot. I wanted to see some maybe mechanical wirings or something along the skin. I didn't really know how to best prompt for that at the moment. And it gave me these which weren't great. So you know what? I hit reroll. No harm, no foul. Let's see another four. Okay, I became a fan of number one. I like the way it blended into her skin. It's a little more subtle to say the least. Next, I selected parts of her face and tried the prompt, mechanical lines of an android robot. Again, not really sure which direction to take the prompt, but this is what I tried and it kind of worked out. Like look at number one. That is so stunning shocking, impactful. I like all of them, to be honest. I was thinking about number two, I was thinking about number four. Number three is cool, but a little 
too much. And I guess I just figured number one would be the easiest to see the progression from Marsha the human to Marsha the robot. Ah, like look at that. That's so good. I mean, I like it a lot. And now this is where the fun begins. You still have access to Midjourney's other features, like the panning feature. I wanted to see more of Marsha the Martian, so I hit this down arrow to pan the image down. And we get something like these. Okay, you know, you don't have much to look at, much to work with, but I thought number two looked honestly perfect. I mean, look at the way it blended her mechanical stomach into the fabric of her clothes. And then look at the way the mechanical gear kind of matches the style that's already on her face. Whatever aesthetic this is, I'm a big fan. But now looking at the upscale, you'll notice a few missing options at the bottom. We'll get to that in a second. I hit the down pan button again to expand the frame even more. And we have these. These are not looking great, you know? Something's just not quite right about them. I thought this wasn't bad, but look at her hand. It's like elongated, it's weird. And I would love to in-paint it and try and fix it, but the button isn't here. So what can we do? Check out this trick. This is a bit advanced. You can hit the custom zoom button and this will bring up a prompt box. Now all I did was erase the aspect ratio. I think you'll see some tips that say leave it the same, it's kind of up to you. But the real key here is to change that zoom two to zoom one and hit submit. And look, it'll give you four of literally the exact same picture. We didn't do anything to it. We didn't zoom out, we didn't zoom in, we left the zoom at one. But now it's as if we have fresh pictures. So choose one for an upscale and boom. Look, now we have all of our other options. We can pan to the left or pan to the right, which we couldn't do earlier, but we can now use in painting. And when I did this the first time, I actually didn't have remix on. I left it off so that the prompt didn't change. And I just covered the area of her hand and look at the job it did. All of them are okay, but number three is by far the best, in my opinion. Look how good that looks. It can fix hands now, and you don't even have to specify. You just mark the area, and it's like, oh yeah, let me fix that for you. Honestly, you could get similar results with just the subtle variation button, but in painting is fun, and selecting just one area that you want worked on, that's a big workflow bonus, especially if you're looking for one perfect picture. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you one more thing with Marsha the Martian. Take a look at this. I selected her hair. I wanted to turn her into a blonde. At first, I just tried blonde hair, and I think these worked out fairly well. I mean, they match the scene. And that's amazing considering a few seconds ago, she didn't have blonde hair. I tried writing a little more of an elaborate prompt, and sure enough, I think you'd say that these turned out better. And you know, maybe four is not good, but two is impressive. Number one is good. You can do a lot within painting. Like, look at that. She's beautiful. Okay, let me just run through a couple more quick examples. I made a picture of an empty park bench at night, dark, moody, pitch black sky, one lamppost, unsplash. This is the exact picture I was looking for because I wanted to add some characters to the bench. That didn't quite work out how I was expecting. First, you'll see that I tried getting the Joker. It didn't come up at all. I tried getting Joker and Batman sitting together. These did not work very well. The Joker sitting on a park bench. I mean, number three is okay, but it really doesn't look that good when you look closer. And that's where another big tip came into play, and that is to select a large area, probably larger than you'd expect. Because look how these turned out. They're not bad. I mean, they're not perfect. He's not exactly sitting on the bench, but number three is okay. And that was done by selecting a square that big, way bigger than what you'd want, right? That seems to be one of the key takeaways from this first day of in painting. Look, I tried getting the Joker and Batman sitting on the bench by selecting the two different rectangles. And it did a good job at putting in two characters. It just, you know, they're not perfect representations of those characters. And I think that's okay for now. We're still in Mid Journey 5.2. Mid Journey V7, that'll be a different story. And I guess I would say that this is a bit of a surprise that this isn't called 5.3. They're just adding this feature onto 5.2. Maybe 5.3 is not ready yet. Maybe we'll see V6 sooner than later. Don't quote me on that, but I do like number three a lot. That's a funny picture. Okay, check this out. I wanted a wide angle of a winding country road and these shots were absolutely perfect. Number three is exactly what I was looking for. And I tried to get a car driving down the country road. Long story short, this didn't work very well at all. So it had me thinking, could I image prompt the in painting? Spoiler alert, you can. It's weird, but you can. 
So I took this car, hit copy image address, and used the prompt a car driving down a country road, and look, it didn't work at all. So wait, was I lying? No, but this is also true. Sometimes it just doesn't work. I don't understand. However, when I used the link at the front and I said a car driving, these showed up. And look, they're not good. But I was impressed with the shadows. I want to point that out. Somehow it knows that the light source is coming from over here and then it knows there's an object in the way and then it casts a shadow onto the road. That is intelligence, whether you want to call it that or not. Tried again at S400, you know, wasn't great. Still a pretty cool idea and you can let me know if you end up trying that as well. And then I thought this was kind of fun a brick wall unsplash okay can we get graffiti on this wall we can and it looks good like really good and this was my little test to see if midjourney could do text now it can't i guess i should have known that but it was still fun to try like look how good the spray paint blends into the wall it's just amazing i tried some classic techniques of being redundant saying the same thing over and over again. And I like the looks. I like number four. It says hello. We got hollow or holo in number two. I tried to get it to say future tech pilot and uh, no, not there yet but still pretty cool. You know, this whole feature is subject to change. This is just a first impression. There's probably a lot more you can do with this. If there's anything I'm missing, please leave it in the comments. I hope you're doing well. Take care and I'll see you next time. Peace.